Hello everyone, Ken here, back with another video where I review your projects, resumes, and portfolios. Special thanks today to Pernay who sent his uh, a portfolio, his resume, and his GitHub profile in. So this will be fun to look through. He does a really good job at some things. His portfolio website might be one of the most uh, intuitive that I've seen. And it's something that a lot of you guys, I would highly recommend getting inspiration from or replicating. Um, again, if you would like me to review your project, resumes, portfolios, etc., please shoot me an email at kenji.ds at gmail.com. And also ask me a couple questions below in the comment section. Um, I, I try to answer a few of these at the end of the videos, so definitely stay tuned for that. Without further ado, let's jump in to his resume here. So Pernay is from Germany and in Germany, it's very common to have a picture on the resume. So for his use case, that is perfectly fine. Again, if you're applying in the United States, I do not recommend this. That is not a good practice in the US. Finding jobs uh, and applying in different places uh, globally can be very different. And it's really important to keep that in mind. The next thing I really like about this resume is that he has all of his links up top. This is something I really, really preach. Of almost all the people I've seen, he does one of the best jobs of also highlighting a lot of the relevant skills that are here. So he clearly has worked on a lot of different things. And I think you can safely put skills in there if you've used any of these things in a project or if you've experimented with them at all. One thing I don't see within the Python libraries is pandas or numpy which is a little surprising to me. Those are very common. So I, if I was him, I would assume he's used them and I would recommend just uh, adding those in there. Now, I like the format. I think he packs a lot of information into a single page. Uh, I, I would say that he could probably clean this up either using a little bit of styling, you know, maybe bolding the positions up here or making them capital or underlining them or something just so we see a little bit more differentiation between what these things are, or just making the font a lot smaller with the focus areas or something along those lines. Uh, I also think that in terms of the projects and the work experience, he could focus a lot more on the outcomes. There's a lot of focus on the tools that he used and the methods that he used. And I don't think enough on what the use case of these projects is actually for. So I would like to see, for example, this go right up top. This tells me uh, analyzing raw industrial data to depict a relationship between different uh, operation regimes of a metal production process. That should go at the top to me, rather than thinking about what methods you're using. It, from the business standpoint, they care about you solving the problems significantly more than about what uh, tools or methods you used to get to that solution. So that's just something we should always be keeping in mind. Uh, the same thing goes for the project here. Um, you know, customer segmentation and acquisition. This is very, very, very vague. Um, and also I would put your projects in the order of how interesting they are, how cool they are. You know, the hand gesture detection to me or the rotor temperature uh, estimation those I would put higher because they're more relevant. I believe Pernay's background was in uh, something related to industrial engineering. So putting those up top, or those are most relevant to the types of careers you're probably pursuing. Uh, and also they're more likely to get a little bit more interest, get a hook in if they are just a little bit more advanced, a little bit more interesting. Customer segmentation is just a little bit vanilla for a lot of people. I, one thing I love about this resume that I haven't necessarily seen that often is the keywords associated with each job and each project. Um, so, you know, I use Python for this XG boost. I think that that's a really nice touch and, um, that, yeah, that's a, I, I don't know if I'd necessarily recommend that people do that, but it, it definitely won't hurt your chances. That is something fairly unique. Uh, also, if you are applying in different countries, the, uh, the language is also really important. This is really small, but it looks like these two natives are not lined up. So maybe adjusting the spacing there uh, would be nice. So those are the main things that I have to say about this resume. Again, this is a very, very strong resume. Um, and if there are some subtle things about applying in Germany 
uh, and in places outside of the US that I do not pick up on, definitely let me know in the comments below. So let's jump into his portfolio website. This is something that I think is, is very strong. Um, and I want to highlight a lot of the really positive things around this. So one thing I really like about this portfolio website is we can see about him, his experience, his accomplishments, his recent posts, his projects, and a way to contact him all on the same page. This for the recruiter, for the manager, it saves them from sifting through a bunch of the different tabs on your profile and they can read this like a story. They can get an understanding of your experience by just going through your website in one go. We really want to save these people time. We want to make them believe that we are a very good candidate, again, in the shortest amount of time. So I think that this is nice. It, it is also fine that he has all these other links. Uh, that is also a very nice touch to give people the option. Um, I will say some very small things. So I recommend that he put the research assistant up top because that's the most recent one. In my personal opinion, I don't think certificates hold as much weight as projects do, for example. So I would put all of his certificates below his recent posts or his projects. Uh, these are all links directly to his GitHub page, but I, I, there's really nothing, uh, nothing ill I can say about this portfolio website. It is very simple, it's very straightforward and very effective. I've seen some that were, you know, that were a lot fancier and that that were, a, you know, maybe aesthetically a little nicer, but I don't think you need an incredibly aesthetic um, uh, portfolio website. What you want out of this is it for it to be effective and as uh, practical as possible. You know, data scientist managers, when they're hiring someone, they're thinking about all of this stuff in the frame of data science. So if someone is going really long on the visuals or making it super, super aesthetic, but the content isn't there, they might assume that you would go about your analysis like that as well, is that you're spending too much time building the graphs and not focusing on the core material. Um, or if you know, you're, you're, there's no aesthetic at all, this clearly has a very, a very good aesthetic, but if there's no aesthetic at all, but it's just a ton of research and a, a wall of text, they might also assume that you do uh, your analysis in the same way, which isn't always desirable. So again, this is a really strong balance of both of those things. So let's jump into his GitHub. Uh, again, a, a nice picture there, a very simple fine tag. I personally don't like love the uh, deep learning, machine learning like enthusiast. I see that so, so much. Um, and anything you can do to differentiate from that, anything you can do to talk about yourself differently, uh, I think is probably a positive thing. So I wouldn't say don't include that, but um, I see that a lot. And whenever you're seeing something a lot, uh, that's not always that's not always a good thing. Uh, he has some background. He hasn't been quite as active recently. I would imagine. I think I saw that he had gotten an internship pretty recently, so that makes total sense. Uh, let's just jump into a couple of the projects and look at the readmes, and then uh, we can hopefully send him on his way with that little bit of advice that I gave. So, I really like the table of contents. Um, this is from, I think, the Udacity Nano degree capstone project. So I've seen this one a couple times before. I wouldn't, for his uh, background, I wouldn't like headline this project, but I think it's totally fine to have it in your portfolio. If you're doing projects through, through courses, through whatever that may be, absolutely put them in your GitHub. Uh, you can put them on your resume too, but if you have stronger projects or more novel projects, I would put those ahead of, of, the, uh, of the ones you do through courses. So he has a nice project overview. He also has, an, uh, which is a, a reasonable summary. Talks about the data and the description. I really like it when people go in depth into the data uh, and then a technical overview. He kind of hides the results in the notebook. I would like to see more results in general. I always like to see results up top in the summary. So that would be something that you might want to adjust. In business, there's this concept called the bluff, which is bottom line up front. So you want people to be able to read basically a, a line or a paragraph and understand what the whole research, the whole analysis is about and what the findings are. We are trying to save people time. We're always trying to efficiently convey our message while still making sure that, 
there's enough robustness that people aren't just making a decision off of a whim. So if we have our advice up front or our results up front, we can let people read as much uh, as they want of our actual project. Um, but we, we're not forcing them to sift through the whole thing and they'll just be pissed at us because, they, you know, we, we made them read a, a 20 minute piece of research when they could have just uh, skipped somewhere and found the last line, which is what they were looking for. So uh, again, this is this is pretty good. Uh, let's look at another one. I, I thought this one was a lot a lot more effective. So concrete compressive strength. Um, I don't think that this was this was not something he forked or anything, right? No. Um, so this is really in line with his background. So we're talking about the industrial engineering. Uh, this is a project I would really like him to headline. I, I think that when you're doing projects that are in line with your background, what you're studying or your interests or anything in that nature, that's a lot more appealing to employers. So uh, again, this is a very solid readme. I love his data description. And I, I like how he goes in depth with the visuals for the results. This is a lot more, more interesting to me as well. Uh, it does, you know, he does in the, uh, in his resume, as well as in these project projects, there isn't as, I'd probably like a bit more context around the results. I'd like a bit more. Why, why is this useful? Why are these findings practical? You know, what is this feature importance? Tell me, um, and how could I apply these findings to an actual business problem? So that would probably be my biggest piece of advice to Pernay is to think about, okay, why are we, why are we doing this? What positive things could happen after we uh, conclude this analysis and, and it is passed off to someone else. So there's no problem with, you know, expanding on that and talking about, oh, you know, if we were to give this to a company, we expect that they could save something on their costs from focusing more on uh, the type of cement that they use rather than um, how old it is or whatever, or like redoing it, or if it's fine aggregate or coarse aggregate, whatever that might be. So that would be uh, something that I think would help Pernay, but also almost everyone that, that watches these, almost everyone that is applying, because that is arguably one of the biggest oversights, I think, for, for new applicants. So again, thank you, Pernay. The portfolio, the resume, everything was really strong here. There's a lot to learn from, but these little tweaks, I think could help him take his job search to the next level. All right, so for the, for the Q&A section, the first question is from Meherzad, and he says, as a beginner, I'm going through lots of books and tutorials to comprehend the concepts of each algorithm and how to apply them, basically using them in a project. Many of the suggested projects for newbies have been done and posted by thousands of people, including bootcamp projects. Even if I do everything on my own thoroughly, it's still the same data set project and approach. I'm wondering if it's okay to add them to my portfolio, at least until I do a little more advanced projects. And my answer is it, it absolutely is okay to include them in your portfolio. You should 100% include them on your GitHub and your Kaggle. I will say that when you do get better projects, those are the ones you're going to be wanting including on, uh, those are going to be the ones you want to include on your resume and also on the, the pin projects of your GitHub. So 100% show all your work, show everything you've done. That is a really good practice. Uh, the more, the better in my opinion, but just be creative when you're organizing these things later on in your portfolio and make sure you're really putting the ones that you're most proud of, the projects that are most unique at the very top. Um, the next one is Aiden and he loves this series. He believes it's full of useful tips. Thank you, Aiden. I appreciate that. I'm glad that you're finding it useful. Uh, he's just starting out his master's in data science and he's planning to do some project work to complement the course content. He saw that I did my undergraduate in economics and he was wondering if I have any economics undergraduate, uh, any tips for an economics undergraduate transitioning into data science. And so the answer is yes. I think for me coming from an economics background, the one area that I wasn't as strong in as was programming and the organization around that documentation 
Uh, and so my advice to him would be really focus on learning Python well, the fundamentals, but also focus on GitHub a lot. If you can write production level code, if you can organize your code, if you get used to using these systems early on, that'll carry you so, so far down the road. It is such an important skill. So that is it for the questions here. Thank you so much for watching and good luck on your data science journey. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Also, try checking out some of these videos over here uh, to watch next.